hello guys good morning afternoon evening wherever you are yes you're welcome to my channel so in today's video i'm going to be showing you how to sew this dress yes it's a corset dress and i already have the cutting tutorial on the channel so if you are interested please go check that out okay so um this dress was fun making yes it was really fun making because it entails process by process and i really wanted to capture everything so that explains uh, the length of the video so it took me about uh, a whole day like literally a whole day from morning from dawn so from dawn to dawn to make this dress guys yes so if you are interested in this video please stay tuned don't go anywhere okay don't forget to subscribe like and then share my video and let's get right into the video so i'm going to hold my tool and then um my felt bobbinet together all right so this is the felt bobbinet i'm going to be placing this on the tool that i've cut like so and i'm going to be pressing this with an iron okay so pressing this together it will hold the two fabrics in place or the two materials in place okay so once that is done we move over to the back and do the same thing for the back so guys just like the front just do the same thing for the back okay so i went ahead to cut my lace all right so in the cutting tutorial you see that so the next thing is to go ahead and sew our bias we are going to be creating our channels on this but for the back it's not going to be created the bias is not going to be created on the surface or on the right side it's going to be created on the wrong side so i'm going to be arranging my fabric so i have the lining for the um for the back okay so this is the main fabric for the back including the lace okay but i'm going to be pinning this without the lace because the lace is going to come later after i have created my channel for the back okay so i'm just you know kind of pinning this together with the satin that i cut for the back and i'm going to grab my felt bobbinet infused with the two also as well in the same way and i'm going to be marrying the two together using some um affix pins okay so um this is just a process to allow me to start creating creating my um my boning channel so this is the lace i cut for the back okay so this lace is actually beautiful like it's not really giving in the camera it is really beautiful all right so these are the linings for my back after i'm done with my bone channels so these are the linings for my back so i am going to go ahead and then be marking my bone channels for the back okay so first things first i want to create um three channels excluding the side uh, channel okay the side seam and the middle seam so including those makes five boning channels but uh, for now i'm just doing three because those are the ones i need the other ones are going to come later when i join the side seam and also turn the back over with the lining okay so for the front i am going to start with my bony channels from the middle guys because of the lace because of the nature of the lace okay i'm not able to get the markings on the actual lace but i think you can see what i am driving at so i'm just going ahead to create the mark the bony channel so that nothing gets you know crooked and all that so i want to make sure everything is as accurate as possible so whatever i do to the side i am doing to the other side as well okay so this will make it easy for me to create my channels without you know um crookeding or you know bending anything so for the channels now we'll move straight to the machine okay so i have all my my patterns and i'm packing them to the machine so before we do the machine stuff let me cut these uh, designs from the lace because i'm going to be using this embroidery or this design for my um 
sleeve okay so after i have finished cutting we are now about to create the boning channels so i'm using a bias for this process if you've seen most of my corset tutorial by now it is either i use a bias or i use the same allowance of the fabric i am using so for today i'm going to be using a bias to create my bone channels so make sure the bone channels you are creating okay is very equal to the type of bone you want to insect you don't want your channel to be too loose or too tight okay so i am creating the second one for the back as you can see yes so you also one thing you need to know is you need to free your hand okay whenever you are making a creating a bone channel just allow the machine do its work you all you have to do is just control the fabric that is all you have to do stop applying pressure when you're creating a bone channel because it's going to cause wrinkling that you don't want okay so just you know free your hand from you know uh, trying to put pressure on the machine or sorry on your fabric or on your your casing okay so i am almost done with creating this uh channel and the next th thing i'm going to do is i'm now going to place my lace on very nicely and then pin it down like so okay so once that is done i'll go ahead and then do the second one the same way I did the first one so everything is done right now and now the front is what we are going to be doing right now so I'm going to start with my channel for the front just like I did for the back I am starting from the center okay and then on on the right side of the fabric not on the wrong side okay so that is where I am creating my channel right now on the right side and i'm using a bias okay a matching bias for this purpose okay we have bone casing but trust me where i am located guys if i want a bone casing it's really really difficult to get one unless i go to accra and i'm not ready to go to accra just because of a bone casing okay so i decided to use a bias which works well and which i will be covering anyways i'm not going to be leaving this as you've already seen the video i'll be covering this so the next bone channel i am going to you know use the the line that i made i'm following that line and i'm placing my bias neatly on it like so and i'm going to be creating the channel so that goes for each and every channel that i will be making okay so just go ahead and then you know neatly don't put pressure on your fabric okay just you know leave your machine to do the work and all you have to do is control your fabric so that it doesn't turn right or left just control it to move the direction you want it to move okay so um the next thing is to make the third bone casing I'm going to be creating the casing for all for one part okay and the other part is going to be done off camera because we don't want the process to be really long like if I'm to show everything like the video will be like an hour and more okay so I decided to show you half of what I am doing and the next I am going to be doing that off the camera so just follow what I am doing Okay, so follow what I am doing. Yes, so um, this is what I have so far. As you can see, you can see the beauty of the fabric, right? Yes, it's not coming. It's now showing very well. The fabric is really beautiful. Like I fell in love with the fabric the moment I saw it at, at the shop, okay? And I really wanted to go for it, yeah. So um, as a designer or yes as a creative designer you always need to you know know your choice of um, fabrics it helps you know bring out the beauty of what you are picturing in mind all right so guys uh, my clients wanted um royal blue and gold 
so i decided to go with the royal blue and just a little bit of gold because i don't want things really exaggerated okay so for the last bias i'm going to be creating before i go off camera i'm going to be creating this last one so make sure you are you are following your line so that you get your bias very straight and beautiful okay so guys if you're enjoying this tutorial please 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 what are you waiting for kindly subscribe to the channel please subscribe turn on the bell notification comments like like they they, they boost me they give me energy okay to create more video for you guys all right so i promise you more of this is going to be coming yeah more of the couture stuff more of this you know stylish dresses it's going to be coming more on the channel if you engage me properly by subscribing liking sharing and also turn on the bell notification so you'll be the first to get notified anytime i upload a new video so i'm done with one part and i'm going to be doing the rest of the part of camera all right so guys everything is done now you can see how beautiful it looks right yes so the next thing is to cover my bra cups so guys um these bra cups i'm just holding it by half an inch on both sides because i feel it's too big for my clients and i want it to sit well around the chest line so i have a, a process where i cover my bra cup using the perfect means okay so that uh, video will be in the descriptive box i already have a video on it so i'm not going to go deep into that i'll put that video in the descriptive box make sure you check that out okay so the next thing is to you know create our structure uh, bone design that was inserted around the cap area okay so i made this i cut i showed how to cut this in the sewing tutorial so this design is going to be placed around this cap area and it's going to go over the arm okay so i'm just sewing this um on a quarter inch on both sides and i'm going to be flipping this over like so so just like you know a belt strap is made just flip it over and then press it very well okay so guys um right after pressing this i went ahead to join this uh, part that i will not be attaching my structural design to okay i went ahead to join that bra cap area but i'm going to be showing how i i joined the second cap after creating my boning channel so i am creating my bone channel before i am going to be attaching it to the cap area okay so that uh, i'll be able to insect my bone during the right time or when the time is due all right so um cutting off my threads now i'm going to find a place where it's convenient for me to you know place this and then so it's on my store it down with my machine before i go ahead and then attach the second bra cap to it so i'm just still figuring out where it's going to be good okay where it's going to be okay for this process okay i think i have come to a conclusion now so i'm just going to hold this down okay with my uh, machine yes and then I'm going to cut off the excess I have around my uh, cap area. Okay, so just cut off your excess like so. And then once you're done with cutting off the excess, okay, just go ahead and attach the second bra cap to it. So I'm going to be showing you guys how I attach. Sorry, my machine is against the wall, so I couldn't film from the other side. But all you need to know is you need to match this. You know you are dealing with curve okay so you need to respect every curve taking your seam allowance into consideration okay so respect and give accord to every curve taking your seam allowance into consideration i am doing i am holding one with the you, my one hand with the corset because i have an under wire in the bra cap and i want to take my time to fix this really nicely so just respect all your curves make sure you are sewing according to the seam allowance 
is you left it okay so assuming you left a quarter inch make sure you do that if you left a half inch do sew it by half as well so i've removed my wire right now and i'm going to be creating a, 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 a you know a wire bone casing or, or should i say a wire casing yes whereby my wire will sit in and then it will feel like relaxed on my client so i'm just creating that you know that a uh, casing for the wire so after create, creating the casing for my wire i am going to go back and insect my wire that i removed inside i'm going to insert it back okay so uh quickly insert the wire back i'm inserting it right into the backup where I first removed it. That is why I'm setting it back. Okay, so I'm setting it back. After I am done, I am going to be pressing it and making sure it's, it sits well. And I'm going to be closing that medium. Because I had to unstitch that side. I had to, you know, rip that side off. But now, you, after you are done, just close everything back. Okay, so I'm going to be doing the second one. So make sure you cut off every thread okay to leave your work nice and neat okay so this is how it looks closer to the camera i'm going to be doing the same thing to this side this the other side the the wire has been removed as well okay so i'm just going ahead to you know create the casing for for this other side as well and then once i'm done with that i am going to go ahead and then insect my wire just like i did for the first one okay so i hope everything is understood and we are clear on that right so um guys in case you have a a rough felt bobinet around your under cup area make sure you bind that with the bias because the felt bobinet bobinet sorry can be really like a uh, painful when it comes in contact with the body especially the parts where uh, there is a cut or the parts where the scissors has passed through so make sure you bind that place very well with the uh, bias before you stitch it down so i'm done now and i am inserting my um my wire back into my bracket like so and then for that one too i'm going to be closing that medium okay but i didn't show that so now i have all my back and my front panel done and then let's move to the next step okay so i'm going to be dealing with my tool now so this is my sleeve remember as i was cutting i cut for only the back now i'm going to be removing the front okay and i'm going to be cutting the front as well so i'm just going to place this on the center like so all right so always make sure you notch the center okay so that when you are placing this you place it you place it on the center and then now i'm going to be bringing my front part out like that so i'm pinning so that it doesn't move around and makes it easier for me to cut okay so after pinning i'm just bringing out my front uh i'm home yes so that is it for the sleeve the next thing is to you know attach our list to it but before that i'm just going to do something to prove to me that this is the right because i don't want to start matching fabrics to determine the the depth okay so in order to know the right from the left i am just using this thread okay to you know kind of easily identify as soon as i lay my eyes on it to know where my right side is so my right side is where i have attached my pin sorry my thread to so i cut this out as i should and i'm going to be attaching it right in the center of my um you know my sleeve okay so i'm attaching this right and i'm going to be using thread and needle to do that so um guys all the the both sleeve are done okay it, they are done i have attached this using thread and needle i used a um, monofilament thread a thread that is not easily seen okay i use that type of thread to hold this down to sew the lace onto 
my sleeve so i'm going to be sewing this by half inches because it was half inches allowance that i left for this so make sure you're joining your sleeve so um with this half inches allowance just you know if you if you did one inches for the sleeve just you know sew by one inch if, if it's half inch just do half inch so i'm done for the first one now i'm going to be sewing the second sleeve as well okay yeah so guys like i i say please subscribe to the channel share this to your loved one someone might be interested in sewing okay and this video is very detailed the person will learn a lot from this so we are done with the sleeve moving on to the yoke itself so for the right for the right side of the yoke facing each other make sure uh, you are sewing the neck by the allowance you left okay so i'm doing half an inch because that is the allowance i have planned to sew the yoke by so the yoke is something that you don't need to use like you know small small stitches just use at about uh, at most two inches or less for that don't use micro stitches for your yoke so when you are done just trim the excess of just trim it really closely to just trim leaving at about a quarter or one eighth of an inch from that okay so so trim the neckline of the back very neatly as well and then now i am closing off where i will be attaching my hook and eye note each yoke has a lining so that is what i'm doing i'm just going to be sewing this and i'm flipping it over and iron neatly okay so just also close off your keyhole because it's going to be a keyhole at the back all right so close up that keyhole make sure you trim every excess of so that it appears nice and neat so i'm going to be doing the same thing for the other side of the back first of all you sew the neckline so match everything neatly okay match and make sure everything is aligning perfectly before you you know you sew okay so it becomes very neat all right so as you can notice i am not back stitching anything my stitch length is not loose and it's not too tight too okay and yoke doesn't easily come off like that so just make sure you have a running stitch okay even after sewing your your you know your allowance make sure you have a running stitch that you can you know always hold on to when so i'm holding my running stitch like that so this is the running stitch so this is the running stitch i'm holding and pulling off yeah so make sure you have the running stitch so with this a uh, running stitch okay i don't back stitch on my yoke because it has the tendency to fold when you back stitch okay so use a stitch that is really appropriate and also make sure you have a running stitch a stitch that is made but not on a fabric so yes so with that you can always use that stitch to you know straighten your fabric at the edges really well before you sew so i am just attaching my pins which is a temporal something okay so i'm just attaching it to the open side to where i'm going to be you know attaching it to the neckline for the back and then my secret okay so i use a fabric starch okay uh fabric you know spray starch right to wet completely wet my wet my yoke okay for both the front and the back and then once that i'm done i just go ahead and you know put things in place make sure everything is nice and straight before i iron okay so um match everything really nicely before you iron and also make sure the heat is not too much it's just appropriate for the, the the type of fabric you are handling okay so i'm going to go ahead and pin this the side that i'm going to be attaching to my neck 
I'll just pin this down very well and then iron it really nicely. So once that is done, I'm just going ahead to, you know, sandwich the front into the back. Okay, for my shoulder, I'm going to be closing my shoulder by half an inch. Okay, but make sure everything is aligning perfectly. Make sure you arrange everything nicely nice and neat guys so after that i am going to be sewing this using my uh, sewing allowance of half an inch align everything make sure everything is aligning perfectly okay make sure you you know you make everything fall in place very well before you sew there is no need to rush at all in making this type of dresses like i always tell you it's always better to take your time, okay, than to go ahead and then lose the stitches all over. You even go ahead or you destroy your, you know, your fabric, especially when you are dealing with tool and you want to try and lose and come back and lose and come back. You're going to be destroying the fabric, okay? So make sure you take your time when you're making this. So the next thing is to add your basting stitch. Make sure you are not sewing it on your sewing allowance. A little bit far away from your sewing allowance will do. Do the same thing to the other side of the back. Okay. So, like so, do not, you know, um, add any, you know, tightening or any, uh, you know, pressure to it. Just let it be. Just let it sit around nicely like that. So, exactly where I've added my pins, I am trying to work my way around that area. As you can see so I'm creating my basting like so and yeah so this is it um, for the yoke now the next thing is to you know fold this yoke together iron this to get the center and make sure everything is in place nicely like that now you are going to bring your corset okay and then you are going to be using um, either a fab a a fabric marker a chalk anything you have available okay to come uh to draw this neckline nicely okay so i'm going to use my chalk i've marked the center to the center okay so that is why i folded this so match your center to your center make sure it's overlapping equally okay like no side is overlapping than the other so after marking this okay as you can see this is it so because the fabric stretches i'm going to be trimming off leaving some half inch allowance there okay so once that is done just match your your yoke to your corset center against the center and then start aligning your fabric okay so this is you know you need to calm down when you are dealing with yokes you need to always be cool calm down take your time okay so you get everything right okay so i'm just going to sew exactly the allowance i left and also i'm going to be sewing stopping at where the arm is supposed to stop at okay so once that is done i'm going to flip it over to this side and continue so guys you see how i'm fixing my yoke yes so match everything really nicely and then continue with your stitching okay so take your time when you're doing this you don't need to rush because you don't want to be losing and coming back be losing and coming back okay so i have stopped okay leaving half inches so this is it closely leaving half inches because i'm going to be sewing the sides to my corset okay so um once that is done i'm dealing with my lining so i've already attached my um uh, caps to the lining and i'm making a top stitch on my lining okay so this top stitch is hiding all the rough edges inside the cap because the net is transparent okay and i don't want all the stitches coming out from the the net so coming out to show in the net that is why i'm stopped i'm top stitching to hold this in place so after that i'm just going to use the lining 
to flip over the neckline okay so just go ahead and then pin this along the edge and after pinning okay you are going to be sewing that so uh next is to attach the side panels to each other so this is the main fabric i'm attaching this by half an inch okay because it's half an inch seam allowance that i left so i'm attaching this by half an inch for the side panel of my corset okay so um once this side is done all right yeah so i'm going to be notching all right and then i am going to be creating my you know my bone channel there but before that i'm going to be doing the second one and create the bone channels of both sides so after sewing just go ahead and notch okay so notch and uh, make a top stitch okay to hold that in place okay yes so the next thing after making your top stitch to hold that in place is to attach your yoke okay so i'm attaching my yoke half inch away from where i'll be attaching my last bone and also half inch away from my side seam okay so i'm going to be sewing this on a half inch sewing allowance okay as usual i'm making sure my side seam allowance is open and very flat before stitching this down okay so um go ahead and do the same thing to the other side so once this is done i have top stitched like i said already and i am using my bone casing here okay my bone casing here is my bias okay i don't have an original bone casing so i'm using a bias to create my bone for the sides okay so guys now i am going to be dealing with the lining also for the back as well i am going to be flipping the line neckline over with my lining okay and i'll make sure i leave something small that is half an inch okay so that i'll be able to join the the lining for the um front and the back together so just leave something half an inch okay that way you can be able to sew the linings together so the linings for the front and back is done it is sewn together as you can see make sure the neck line is nice and flat and close that area as well and then the next thing is to make a top stitch on every thing okay so i'm making a top stitch on the lining okay so um once that is done i'm going to be closing the side the backs okay the center backs together so um to close this now i have flipped it over with my lining and i'm sewing just about the sewing allowance i left for that okay so depending on the allowance you left okay you need to sew using the allowance you left okay so i left half an inch and i'm done with that i'm going to do exactly the same thing to this side so just flip it over like so and then go ahead and then you know sew this as well okay so once that is done trim off the bulkiness around the sides or the back okay trim it off this is a felt bobbinet it it can be quite bulky okay it can be really really bulky so trim off as much as you can and then go ahead and press so this is me after pressing it look at how good it looks guys yeah i've used um you know pins to hold the necklines in place and this channel area so i've created my bone channels the last bone channel for the back yes we are almost about finishing the top so now the next thing is to join my sleeves yes and the sleeves are done i know you guys know how to fix sleeve attach sleeve if you don't know how to comment down below i'll be i'll be filming a detailed tutorial on that for you guys okay so with this a uh, bone structure created i am going to be cutting a uh, measuring and cutting my bones according to the structure and also this side that i created my bone casing okay i'm going to be inserting a bone into that to give me the structure 
that I need. So I have a video of that in the description box, how to measure and prepare your bone the right way and inserting it into your channel. So everything is done. Bias have been binded neatly, okay, to avoid uh, it being irritating to the body. Okay, so I have done, I fixed all my bones. I fixed everything now and this is how it looks from the inside okay so um i love the bobby net guys i love it because this bobby net is normally used in transparent corsets yeah so i got this from the market as well from the fabric shop so i i thought of trimming like you see me doing and then using the gold part of it because the blue doesn't really match the fabric i have okay if like it really corresponds to the fabric that i have i would have used it but it's way 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 brighter than the fabric i have so i'm just cutting off the gold and i have made that okay i've already cut that measured and prepared that to place on my uh, some of my channels because at, at first i wanted to use it for all but it looked like you know too much so I just had to skip one in the middle and then move to the other. So I have my fabric glue here. This is what I'm going to be using to, you know, attach this to my, my bones. Okay. So I've done several of them. Right. I know this is quite easy. Just apply your bone to the, just apply your glue to the wrong side. Okay. And then go ahead and then place it on your channel like that make sure you press this okay once it's a little bit dry just leave it alone and then move to the the next one okay so guys we are almost done with you know the corset yes i am getting excited because everything is coming in place and it's looking beautiful guys look at that so this is the down okay and i'm going to be taking you to my table to show you how i bring this down together as well before we come back to our machine all right so for the down part make sure you place this right sides facing each other for the back okay this is one of my panels for the back make sure you know you place this on it very well and then you pin accordingly okay do the other side as well leaving the center back unpinned okay so i'm as i am just marking my sewing allowance to the knee area and the rest i'm just going to blend it half an inch to my knee okay from the down part to my knee i'm just blending in half an inch because i i really did not add any seam allowance to the down part so this is how it looks okay i am going to be sewing this down with my um machine okay so when i come back i'm going to be showing you the next step to take so i'm done stitching this down now it's time for me to attach my crinoline to the down part of this dress okay but i do not want to close the whole zip line of this dress okay so a little bit around the tail i mean the center back okay i'm going to be closing like 15 inches right from the bottom part i'm going to measure like 15 inches okay and i'm going to be closing half an inch down like so and then once i'm done i'm going to go ahead and then use my overlock stitch and then we go ahead to you know attach our crinoline so this has been overlocked very neatly like that and now i'm about to close a little bit okay not too much so this is the hem of my you know my skirt okay the center back so after closing a little bit from the center back we've already closed the sides we've already closed the sides so now i'm going to attach my crinoline so i'm opening my sewing allowance so it stays nice and flat okay so I'm just sewing a quarter inches, all right. Initially, I added one inch, but you know, 
the the length here it is the more beautiful it looks so i'm just doing a quarter inch okay for attaching my crinoline and then yes so yes yeah, so you know the the corset is coming in place so if you don't know how to attach your crinoline correctly to your your dress just comment below okay right now i presume you guys can that is why i'm not showing a detailed tutorial on that so if you don't know how to so just comment and i'll i'll do that for you guys a detailed one so i'm done with that i'm done with the down part you see it's very easy so the next thing guys is to match the center okay against the center of the corset match the skirt to the corset okay and then go ahead and then pin so along the back okay the center back i'm going to be doing two inches away from the main corset because one inch is going to save us my allowance and the other one inch is going to be for the measurement it's going to you know contribute to the measurement all right so um the next thing is just you know pin the sides together so that it stays nice and flat okay so go ahead and then pin everything very nicely before you take it to your sewing machine if you can sew it without pinning that's fine okay so sometimes i do the stitching without pinning as well so the next thing is now i am going to be closing the back okay so matching my corset matching the center back of my corset and the center back of my skirt you know the allowance i left for the zip is one inch so matching that i am going to be marking 10.5 inches okay for my zipper opening okay for the zipper opening so from this 10.5 down okay i am going to be closing this using one inch to my break point and then when i get to my break point i'll be blending into the hem by half an inch okay so i'll do that quickly and then come back and show you guys and also i'm going to be attaching my zipper as well all right so um i have a way to attach zipper to a stretch without it folding if you want to see please comment below and i'm going to do that for you guys so the next thing is to um add my some people call it underlay some people call it modesty flap so the weight of my uh, modesty flap is 9.5 inches and then the length is 11 inches so it is 9 by 11 inches for my modesty flap okay so the next thing i'm going to be matching this and then ruling my line and also i'm going to cut out so after cutting this out i am going to be adding my paper states just one side i'm going to sew it and flip it over to the right side iron properly and then seal off the the place i i flipped it over at okay so now our modesty flap is done so the next thing to do so the right way to attach your modesty flap is to align this to the neckline of the left side of the back and then make sure you pin this down it's a little bit difficult to pin but make sure you pin this down and then also align it like perfectly or nicely to the right side and pin as well just like i've done and make sure everything falls nice and flat okay so just like this and then you pin this okay for the uh, left part of the skirt like almost the skirt area and then so but make sure you leave a little bit of allowance where you can go ahead and attach your eyelet okay so i have the tool available so if you're interested in the tool just you know pick my number from the descriptive box and we took from there so with the finishing of this i added some stones to my cap area and also i cut some of the lace and i used a hand stitch to hold this down along my neckline and also a little bit around the bra cap so i'm going to be using some beads also on this area okay where i have attached the claw stones i'm going to be at, um, beading around there and i went ahead to you know cut out some of my lace okay 
to decorate the neck area of my dress okay so this is solely according to your preference anyhow you want to you know kind of decorate your or you kind of create your finishing okay you just go ahead and do it out so for the back i'm going to be adding some hook and eye to the back okay so once i am done with the beading i have a beading tutorial so i'm not going to go deep into the beading i am just you know i'm going to put this on a time lapse and it's going to be faster just like it is okay so i when i had to do this beading i used at about um an hour and 30 minutes okay because it's a net or it's a tool i didn't want to you know do something that i might you know try to lose on later on i might try to lose later on yes yeah, so i just had to take my time and then bead and then make sure it stretches just right along uh, with the stretch it has in the tool okay so i just took my time to you know beat this but i put this on a time lapse because the video was going to be lengthy but i am going to be doing some small explanations here so you pick up your your thread and needle you pass it along the back to the wrong side and then right up to the right side and then you pick you make sure you tie a knot to hold the thread and needle in place and then you pick up your bead you go ahead and insert uh, the needle to where you want the bead to sit very nicely and make sure you don't pull it so that you fold your tool so once you are done make sure you stretch um you know the thread you stretch your tool to make sure that the um the beads or the thread is not you know crumpling uh, or it's not uh, going in the way of the stretch what i'm trying to mean is make sure it stretches nice just like uh, you know the fabric stretches you know it doesn't have to you know hold the fabric in place just because you've beaded that side okay you just have to stretch nicely along with the fabric so once um, that is done you tie along every you know beaded edge okay so uh that brings us to the end of this video as you can see the dress looks really nice like really classy on her thank you so much so 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 much for watching like i have the down parts of the video how to cut the down how to cut the top the video is in three parts okay it's very long yeah it's in three parts so make sure you check that out thank you so much for sticking by i love you all so 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 much you have a great day see you guys in my next one okay bye